You've probably seen grandmasters and famous streamers and YouTubers playing chess while drunk. Do I have tequila? Even the world number one Magnus Carlsen is known all the time to play in titled events such as Title Tuesday while drinking, partying, and often completely crushing his opponent by using some offbeat uh, opening. While it is certainly fun to watch happen, there is actually a genuine uh, interest in whether or not drinking in chess can improve your actual performance. But has anyone really properly studied the effects of drinking in chess? Well, that's exactly what I'm going to do. My name is Wesley, I love playing chess, and I also happen to have a degree in psychology. And although I am by no means an expert in this, I have actually done a few studies myself. And so I'm going to take what I know about the methodology and statistics involved in psychological studies or scientific studies in general to conduct a proper experiment that actually follows the guidelines that any study would have to follow in order to be published and be considered valid. Now, that does not mean that this study is going to be published in any kind of academic journal or anything like that, nor does it mean that the results and the statistics that I'm going to be using will be able to be generalized to the general population, because there's actually very strict guidelines uh, that determine what is able to be considered statistically significant uh, and therefore able to be generalized to the whole population. Instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take what I know to make this study uh, much more interesting and just provide more in-depth statistics and information about the effects of drinking on chess. All right, so let's start with the hypothesis. Um, for those of you who don't know what a hypothesis is, a hypothesis is basically uh, the prediction that you're making about the outcomes of your study that's uh, sort of the guideline for the study in and of itself. Basically, as an example, let's say an apple a day keeps the doctor away. Well, your hypothesis, if you were going to test that, would be, okay, uh, I predict that eating an apple every single day will actually improve my health in some general way. So my hypothesis for the study is that drinking will have no significant impact on my win or loss ratio, nor my accuracy for rapid games. Rapid games being either 10 minute games or 15 minute, 10 second increment games on chess.com. I probably won't be playing any time controls longer than that. And the second part of this hypothesis is that it will, however, have a positive impact on blitz and bullet games, uh, both in the win loss ratio and in accuracy, average accuracy determined by the chess.com analysis engine. This is just the general hypothesis, okay? And to actually continue forwards with measuring and all the statistics and all of that, to allow that to have any real validity, you need a operational hypothesis, which means that you can actually take that hypothesis hypothesis and plug it into the statistics. So my operational hypothesis, I have a few of them because uh, they do need to be measurable. And so the first one is my win-loss ratio whilst tipsy will be higher in blitz and bullet than while I'm sober. Okay. The second operational hypothesis is that my average accuracy whilst tipsy will also be higher in blitz and bullet chess. I'll just add here higher than while I'm sober in blitz and bullet chess. Third operational hypothesis is that there will be no significant difference in the win-loss ratio, nor in the accuracy, average accuracy, you know, between all my games that I play for rapid games while I'm playing tipsy as compared to playing sober. All right, so let's talk about the setup. Um, I'm going to be drinking three glasses of wine, okay, of the same wine to minimize uh, what they call extraneous variables. Basically, these are variables that uh, you are not taking into account in your study that could have an influence on the outcomes. So if I'm drinking one day, like a really, really weak type of wine uh, with a low alcohol, you know, alcoholic percentage, not really, usually wine has like more or less the same, but anyways. And then the next day I drink uh, wine or some other kind of alcohol with like a way higher percentage. That is like for sure an extraneous variable because it's gonna have an impact on the results. Um, so I'll be drinking three glasses of wine of the same wine on the days that I drink during the week, okay? One day I'll be playing chess, sober. Next day I'll be playing chess, tipsy, or maybe even drunk, I don't know. Next day, sober, and then so on and so forth. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, okay, will be my sober days, and drinking days will be Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. As you can see, you have three days of the week for each, um, so all of this needs to be the same in order to, you know, properly compare drinking versus sober. Uh, this study is gonna be three weeks, so I'm gonna start today. Uh, today is November 20th, and I'm gonna go until Monday, December 11th. That is three weeks. It should give me enough data to have some kind of, you know, interesting results. A couple other details with the study. Um, I'm not going to be controlling uh, what's in my stomach before I drink, because as we all know, if you have a full, you know, stomach while you drink alcohol, 
um, you're gonna feel the effects much less. Whereas if you have an empty stomach, you can like drink one beer, one glass of wine, and you're you know sent to the moon. I'm gonna try to keep um, a, just a normal amount of food in my stomach, like not gorge myself right before drinking three glasses of wine, because I probably won't feel much at all. But this is just something that is gonna be you know one of those extraneous variables. It's gonna have some kind of impact. I'm not gonna be extremely rigid with you know these kinds of things. I will allow myself to play any games that I want. Okay, any types of games. So that could be Rapid, Blitz, Bullet, it's whatever I'm in the mood for, and however many that I want. But one thing I am going to control is that whatever I play uh, on the sober day, I'm going to play the exact same amount and the same kinds of games the next day. And I will record all this, so if I play three Rapid games and, I don't know, like five Bullet games, I'm going to do the exact same thing um, the following day uh, in the in the other condition. So if the two conditions are drinking and sober, I have to do the same thing in both conditions. Okay, so the methodology uh, is going to be basically the population for my study is just me and myself. So this is uh, what's considered a case study. And in general case studies, the results are not able to be generalized to the you know overall population because that would be absurd if you studied only one person or one you know subject and then generalize the results of that one thing to the entire population. But we still can get some pretty interesting uh, statistics and information, whatever. Okay, next we have the variables. So in psychology, you have two different kinds of variables. You have the independent variable and the dependent variable. Independent variable is essentially uh, the variable that has an influence on the dependent variable. So it's a relationship of influence. And in this case, our uh, independent variable is going to be me either being drunk or tipsy or whatever. Uh, or sober. And this is what's going to have an impact or not on the dependent variable, which is my win-loss ratio and my average accuracy. We actually have two independent variables here, okay? The first one is uh, what we call a nominal variable. I'm not gonna get into all the details, but basically it's either drunk or uh, sober, or the two conditions. I'm either tipsy, drunk, whatever, or sober. And it's controlled, meaning that this is not something like age, where, you know, if we were measuring something like age and its impact on, I don't know, um, eating habits. Age, you cannot influence. We can't do anything. We can't control that. However, drinking, I do have control over. I have control over whether I take a drink or not. So this is what we call a controlled variable um, with two modalities. The two modalities are either drunk or sober. I'll probably be more like more tipsy than drunk, I think, with three glasses of wine. And then the second independent variable is going to be the type of game. All right. So whether I'm playing Bullet or Blitz or Rapid, this is uh, an independent variable that is supposedly going to have an influence on the win-loss ratio and my accuracy. Uh, this is also controlled because I'm the one that controls and decides if I'm going to play Blitz or Rapid or Bullet Chess. There's three modalities for this. We have Bullet, Blitz, Rapid. Okay, so now we have the uh, dependent variable. We have two dependent variables, okay? We have the win-loss ratio and then we have the, I'll just put here actually, average accuracy, you know, which is gonna be determined by the chess.com analysis engine. So first variable is the win-loss ratio. Simple enough, if I win 100% of my games, then my ratio is gonna be 100%. If I were to lose every one of my games, then it's gonna be at 0%. 50-50 is going to be 50, you know, 50% 50 wins, 50% losses. And then the second dependent variable is my average accuracy. So I'm just gonna take all of the games um, that I played in the study, and I'm going to average out the accuracy um, in the two conditions, in the drunk and in the sober condition. All right, so now we're getting um, kind of into the finite details here. Basically, just like we had our general hypothesis, um, we also had the operational hypothesis. Operational meaning um, you need to be able to measure the hypothesis. We need to do the same thing for the variables. So these uh, independent and dependent variables for the moment, those are just general. We need to make them operational, meaning that we can measure them. So um, how am I going to measure the independent variable, which was basically the absence or presence of alcohol in my system? Well, it's whether I drink three glasses of wine or not. So it needs to be specifically needs to be three glasses of wine or not at all, in which case I'm sober. And then uh, the second one, which was uh, the type of game, blitz, bullet, uh, rapid. Next, we have the dependent variable, um, operational dependent variable, which is going to be the percentage of wins and losses in bullet, blitz, and rapid, 
um, and then the second one being percentage of accuracy that's given by the chess.com analysis engine. One last thing, I will be streaming this every weekday, so if you guys want to tune into my Twitch stream, I will leave the link to my account below. Depending on the day, I may or may not be a little bit tipsy. And also I'm doing another series which you guys can find on my YouTube channel. I am growing my beard and I'm not shaving it until I reach 2000 ELO, so I will be continuing that, playing rapid games uh, basically every single day, at least every weekday. I'll leave a link over there if you want to click on it. Uh, and so, cheers to that. Let's get the study started. Thank you.